If you've ever had an oyster or even thought about having an oyster, you're gonna wanna see this. Today we'll be visiting the most famous oyster farm in the entire country. One that supplies some of the best restaurants around the entire world. These oysters fly everywhere. First class, too. Maybe you've never thought about it, but aren't you curious to know how an oyster is made? And heck, maybe my cameraman will find a pearl and retire. That way I won't even have to fire him. Before we go, I'll remind you that we are rapidly catching up to Gordon. And I happen to know that 50% of you watching right now are not subscribed. It only takes a second, so go down and hit that button below. Let's go. Nick, how are you? What's up, man? How are you? Good to see you. Nice to meet you. You want to go see some baby oysters in the hatchery? I love to see some baby oysters. This is Manny speaking of baby oysters. Manny, what's up, nice brother? Nice to meet you. How you doing? Good to meet you, man. Welcome to Island Creek. Let's go. We grow our larval oysters here out to about one and a half millimeters before they go out into the nursery system. That's the large end of what we grow here. This may seem like a silly question, but how do the oysters, how do they reproduce? That's a dirty question, Nick. I don't have a couple answering. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like it's out of breaking bad. What's going on? We're making meth. No, <laughs> we're not making meth. We're making baby oysters. These are all different strains of algae that we feed to our oysters throughout their life cycle inside the hatchery. Why are there so many different types? So we have these different strains. In case one dies, we have redundancy of more to feed the oysters. Got the it. other thing is every different strain of algae has a different nutritional makeup. So we want to produce a balanced diet for the oysters that are growing in here. Follow me, follow me, follow me. As we go through every stage, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger because you have to have a lot of food to feed these oysters. So when I thought you said they get bigger, I did not think you meant like this. And they even get bigger. No way. Yeah, I swear to God. How tall are you, Nick? Six three. Jeez, I wish I was six three. I always lie. I say I'm like ten and a half. I'm like ten and five. Hey, but you're about hey, as tall as he. Cut, cut that out. We don't want anyone to know that. At this point, we can feed from these canisters down to the oysters in various stages of growth. Nuts. Can many take everyone through the life cycle of the oyster? Would that be all right? Yeah. Which is the first one? Minnie, yeah. are you kidding me? Wait, we have it before. <laughs> two years or one hour. Sure. There you go. All right. Number two <laughs> is the D stage, the larvae. 24 hours for this stage. After this stage, we move on to the. How do I say this? You have to guess. The year? That's one week long. That's a long time. Can we uh, correct some of this misinformation? It's not the time for a stage, it's the time in its life cycle. So this is a cumulative total of two years to get to an adult oyster. The fertilization, right? They spawn asexually. The second week is when they develop what we call a sticky foot stage. They grow the seed out to here in the hatchery. So they get to about a quarter or a half inch in size. And then they go through the cycle to their final resting place as an adult oyster. And that is what you are going to eat outside. This is where the magic happens. This is where the baby making happens. So wait, but they're asexually reproducing, right? Simply meaning there's no physical intercourse. They're releasing their, their sex cells into the water column, whether it's sperm or eggs. So if you think of, let's say, like horses, when they'd have all like really nice horses that are the breeder horses, these are, these, are these are your thoroughbreds. Exactly. They have flat hinges. They have really good fluting. So that's what we call fluting. And they just look really pretty, right? These particular oysters are being what's called conditioned. So Cassastra virginicas, they get triggered to spawn when the water temperature gets 70, 75 degrees, and when it gets to 80 degrees, they're really ready to go. The water's getting warmer. They're developing their gonads. You're making these oysters think it's summer. They think, okay, time to make, make babies. babies. Okay, it's baby time. Do you see all the oysters, Nick? I don't see anything. You see all the specks of dust no in there? No way. As I mentioned earlier, the sticky foot stage, that's when you go out and you see these wild oyster reefs that are all attached to each other. You see the brown stuff in there? Yeah. That is live oyster. Each one of those oyster larvae, they're finding an individual grain of oyster shell and they're attaching to it. That oyster thinks that it's attached to the mother load of oyster reefs but it will never attach to anything else for the rest of its life. So you're tricking them. We are literally lying to them. And what you're seeing here is our bottle system. The flow of the water keeps them rotated. You want them to settle on each other. They would just die. That's mesmerizing. So, yeah, there's hundreds of thousands of babies of oysters oh in these tubes, right? From here on out, it's really about the hatchery team sorting them. These are sorted. They're constantly sorted. You're a chef, right? Are you a chef? Doesn't feel great. What tool in the kitchen does this remind you of? A tammy, maybe? Yeah, yeah a tammy, like a tammy yeah. right? Yeah. A traditional use of a tammy, let's say, would be you take a whole big lobe of foie gras, you press it against there, you get all the beautiful parts that go through, and you get all the, the icky shit. veins stuck on the top there. Tammy, gross. We've now left the hatchery. We're outside, right by the water. And this here is that transition stage as they move from the hatchery to the nursery. They're starting to get closer and closer to the oysters. Those are baby oysters, man. Really? Yeah. Tiny, tiny, tiny baby oysters. So after this stage here, bring them out around that corner into the back river where our actual nursery is. We use our sorting tube. Its nickname is Bubba. Wasn't it a smoker named Bubba? Yeah, at the, in Texas, I think. Just now? This is Bubba. 
What would we have to do to name something here, Manny? Manny, we have to do some really god awful things. So it sounds basically like the process is just nurturing them the whole way to get them to like that two years later size to eat them. It's a very long process, and there's a lot of risk involved along the way. Critical moments in their life where they can die. It's a long, arduous process. Can we go see some adults? Absolutely. All right, so for phase number three, we're currently headed out to the Antati farm. We're gonna see that final growth stage of the oyster. We're going all the way to the tip right out here, basically. Do you see Clark Island right there, Clark's Island? Clark's Island is where the real Plymouth Rock is. That's where the pilgrims land on that island. We're gonna do a quick little U-turn here. We're hopping on the beach over there is Plymouth. Over this there's is Kingston. awesome. Oh my God. Get out and push the car, Manny. <laughs> Manny, you're fired. Manny, he's firing you like nonstop over here. You like this? Can't oh. drive in this in the Tesla. Oh! I gotta go out there and open the gate. Wow. your life, bing bong. Bing bong. <laughs> the owl call was. <laughs> and then you have a crow call. <laughs> when they're all horned up and they're trying to get hens and stuff. So you've seen the hatchery, we've talked about the nursery, and here we are at the farm. Are these oyster traps? You wanted to see oysters, right? No, I wanted to catch an owl. So is this just a giant mud flat? Yeah, so this is a bit of like hard sand and mud. I got a question for you. What's that? What do oysters eat? Cheeseburgers! I just always thought they filtered through yeah. water. They're looking for phytoplankton, specifically algae. An adult oyster filters 50, five zero gallons of water a day. Per day. For one reason. For one reason. To eat. To eat. What? Algae. Algae. This is their conveyor belt for food. So instead of migrating around to go find their food like Manny and I are always doing. If I were a lion and you were a tuna, I would swim out in the middle of the ocean and freaking eat you! The oysters just sit there and the food comes to them. That's great, actually. So we're standing in the middle of this massive oyster farm. How many oysters do you estimate are behind us right here? Oh, dear Lord. There's probably about two to 300 per tray. But look how many trays there are. These are really clean. You are what you eat, right? So for me, it's like cheeseburgers and tacos and stuff <laughs> like that. For these oysters, it's a plethora of what Cape Cod Bay gives them. So these get really plump and really big and really juicy. This is that perfect, perfect sort of cup that you want an oyster in. So what you're looking for in a good oyster is it's got to be wet, right? You got to have liquor in there. Guess what? I'm on top. Of the liquor. The meat should fill the cup and the meat shouldn't be translucent. It should be opaque. We have all of these oysters and all these trays that are out of the water. Me and I think a lot of people that have ever seen oysters like would think these have all gone bad. They will seal up at low tide and when the water comes back over them, they'll open up just a little bit. Totally. And it's a perfect seal. You couldn't get this thing open. No, absolutely not. It's no. like trying to crack an egg in your arm. Oh, show it's off. Look at these guns. <laughs> Welcome to the gun show. That can almost take two years to grow this oyster. People often, I feel like, will complain oysters are expensive, blah, blah, blah. What would you say to that? Come out here and try to grow them. <laughs> in all honesty, it's a labor intensive thing. When you see everything that goes into getting that oyster to your plate, you'll understand implicitly why. You look at the oyster on the plate and it might be $3 in a restaurant. You're paying for that two years of it growing from yeah. seedling to oyster. Right? And the risk involved, right? Can you teach us how to open one? First key, it's not about brute strength. It's about getting the oyster knife in the right spot and doing the wiggle and pop. Put it in the lollipop test. That's all the oyster knife that it takes to open. You rotate, wiggle, pop. What does that do for you, Manny? What does that do a lot? All right, so it's my time to give this a shot. We're gonna go in the bottom. No, it's not in quite enough, right? <laughs> the lollipop test, wiggle in and just give it that nice little pop. And then I always give it a nice little flip. Pro move. So that's a nice chucked oyster right Beautiful. there. Beautiful. Can I try? All right. all right, let's wiggle and pop. Let's see if I can do this. All right, wiggle. Oh, I think I got it. It's coming off. Oh, it. Holy! <laughs> There's a pearl inside! This is how much I make in the air. What? The moment we've all been waiting for, it's time to head back to the raw bar and taste some oysters. So what I want to talk to you about is what we're looking at and how to eat an oyster. Let's just pretend that I have never eaten an oyster in my life. Oysters eat the same way wines drink. They have a beginning, middle, and end, and we're about to dive in. First, you got to shuck them. Do that. Remember what it's called? What's it called when you're shucking? What's the two-step process? We gonna pop, man! What? Come on, you're fired! We gonna pop. I forgot. What do you think is the first thing you're gonna taste on an oyster after water in there is Duxbury Bay? Salt. Salt. Right. Salt. But here's the deal. If you don't chew an oyster a couple times, nothing happens. When you do, it starts developing on your palate. Ready for this? It's a good looking oyster. It is a good looking oyster. Wow. Right away, you got punched in the mouth with salt. It's like you're tasting a little kiss of the ocean. It's like sour Skittles, right? But not sour. Salt and then sweet. Oyster etiquette. You put it back on the ice, you put it upside down. Absolutely. When you finish. Is that oyster etiquette? That's pros only. That's what that is. I'm gonna have one more. Is that okay? Have a, we'll, we'll give Manny an oyster. He's fired though. He quit this afternoon <laughs> on me. Let's give him an oyster, try to sweeten him up a little bit, see All if right, he'll come back. Oh, he gets the best one. This right here is just the quintessential oyster. That's for you, oh Manny. Oh, the best for so the best, much. man. Yeah. Taste it. Get the slurp. Eat it? Yeah. It's amazing. Manny. <laughs> 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 
There you have it folks, now you know how an oyster is grown from the little seedling all the way to this right here. Thank you for having us today. Nick, thanks for coming to Island Creek. Happy cooking. Hey Nick. Yeah. I quit. <laughs>